The hills of Tamales and Marin County are breathtaking, to say the least. Dotted with cows and sheep, the landscape looks like it should be on a postcard. But until recently, I had no idea that cattle and dairy farmers in this area are investing as much in the soil that makes up this land as they are in their animals and crops. They're using carbon farming to sequester carbon in the soil. But what exactly does this mean? What carbon farming methods are they using? And how does this contribute to beef and dairy production? Sonia and I decided to visit some farms to find out. Our first stop was Stemple Creek Ranch in the beautiful Tamales countryside. We met up with Lauren Poncha to talk about how he incorporates carbon farming practices into raising grass-fed beef and lamb. I'm a fourth generation rancher. Uh, my great grandfather immigrated from Garzano, Italy in 1897 and ended up on this property in uh, 1901. And we've been continually farming and ranching the property ever since. Stewardship of this land is really important to me, mostly because I want to leave the place better than when we started ranching it. There's been a lot of degradation, not just on our property, but in America over the last 150 years. And we really like to regenerate it and build soil again. And carbon is a huge part of that, the more carbon we can have in the soil. The healthier the soil, the more it's going to produce. In 2013, the Marin Carbon Project used Stemple Creek Ranch as a demonstration farm for a year-long carbon farming program, which included spreading compost on many acres of the rangeland. The results since we've applied the compost in some areas have been remarkable. In other areas that we already had high organic matter, we haven't seen a huge spike in um, increase in production, but the areas that we have not applied any fertilizers or compost in the past have really made a dramatic uh, increase, a little bit of a different uh, biodiversity in those soils. After a quick chat, Lauren took us for a drive across the property to visit his sheep and cows and to see what pasture grasses we could find. There's been so much rain. It's like one of those things where we're either getting too much rain or not enough rain. These are our ewe lambs. They're just starting to have babies right now in the spring. And if you actually look in the mouthful of grass, you have diversity. So this is fillery. That's an annual, but it's super high in protein and sugars. And there's more fillery there. And then you have clover which is really um, a great feed too. Again, super high in sugar and protein. And then all this shiny stuff is ryegrass and it's a really great feed for the cattle. They do really well on it and they just get big and fat. So that's like the perfect diet for the cow, but we let the cow pick what the diet is that they want. I'm implementing these carbon friendly practices for my farm. I think economically it's a viable option. We only get a certain amount of rain every year we need to save it in our soil to be able to grow perennial plants as long as possible and ultimately harvest more beef off of the land in a healthy way for the cattle and for the land. Next, we went to Strauss Dairy Farm, the first certified organic dairy west of the Mississippi and the first 100% certified organic creamery in the United States. We got an official tour from Albert Strauss himself, and he told us about the sustainable farming practices he's using at the dairy. What I've tried to do is create a farming model that is sustainable for the land and the animals and the farmers. And what I'm trying to prove now is that farms are part of the solution to climate change, especially livestock operations. Strauss Dairy Farm has a carbon farm plan to sequester 2,000 metric tons per year of carbon dioxide equivalent over a 20-year period. 80% of that is capturing the methane gas through our methane digester and methane capture. And the rest is through our other farming practices of adding compost, planting hedgerows and windbreaks, and using livestock to promote growth by grazing it down and allowing the, the grasses to grow back. Hang on, did he say methane digester? Let's explore that for a moment. So after the barns are scraped and flushed, the, the liquids come and get separated in this manure separator. 
which separates out the solids, which is the bedding and the manures. And then we take these solids and compost them up on the hill and then get applied back to the pastures. The liquids get piped into this pond where they reside for an average of 30 to 40 days and the bacteria digest the manures and give off methane gas. And this big bubble is actually the gas that's accumulated. The gas is piped into the generator as a fuel that runs the engine that turns the generator, produces electricity that we offset our meters. Talk about closing the loop. It's important to figure out how farmers can afford to do these practices and to implement them without putting a burden on their farming operation. It was obvious to us that Strauss Dairy Farm is a leader in environmentally sustainable practices. But we also wanted to know, what is life like for a Strauss cow? We followed a group of them as they were heading out to graze. We're going down this alleyway to one of the pastures that the cows will be grazing today on, and we rotate them daily to new pastures. We even got to see some babies, and they sure had a lot to say. Finally, Josh took us to the top of the hill where we got a stunning view of Tamales Bay and the Strauss Farm from above. Magical might be the right word to describe it. To be able to sustain family farms and to really make a positive impact on our environment, our mission at the Creamery and myself is to help to sustain family farms in Rinsonoma County. It's important to me because this is my life, this is what I love to do. Farms and methane are part of the problem, so I think we, but we are also a big part of the solution. Dairies and ranches are part of the solution, and these Marin County farmers have shown that it's possible to have economically viable farming operations while still protecting the environment. They're models for what agriculture can achieve in the future. So here's to the future of agriculture. May the soil be full of carbon and the environment be happier for it.